welcome to another edition of riding shotgun okay i gotta clear a few things up um <laughs> people have asked so what do you do you just go drive around or are you actually going somewhere <laughs> uh, actually uh, uh, everyone that i've done has been going somewhere uh, right now i'm going to the office um so no i haven't been just like driving in a circle um, and number two, uh, my friend Mike Pearson last time uh, posted on Twitter, where were you driving in Siberia? No, we had a snowstorm the other day, and um, there's still a little bit of snow on the ground here. It's cold, 23 degrees right now, and um, it's supposed to warm up, though, by Friday. Anyhow, uh, this is, uh, uh, what day, Wednesday? Wednesday. Uh, more uh, is it Wednesday? Wednesday morning, <laughs> the uh, the morning after the NIT game last night, where Illinois beat up Valpo pretty good. Uh, not a real good Valpo team without their best player, by far their best player. Alec Peters is a terrific player, and they would be a very different team um, had he been in the lineup. But <clears throat> that's the way it is right now. This time of year, we saw Cal play last night in the NIT and lose without their two top scorers and. Teams are some teams are shorthanded right now. Illinois was a little shorthanded too. Michael Finke did not play last night. Did not dress with a, a foot injury. I don't know. I can't tell how serious that is. They're a little bit cryptic about that information on his foot uh, to think whether he's out for a more extended period of time uh, or not. But um, at any rate, Illinois played well. More important than playing well, you know, in the NIT, you got to you got to find something to play for. Motivation of some sort, and uh, I think Jamal Walker, <clears throat> the interim head coach, did a good job of asking his guys to, you know, to find it, whatever it is. It might not be the same thing for each guy, and I think that was smart not to suggest let's play for Coach Gross or let's play for, you know, what whatever it is. I mean, find the thing within yourself that that gets you going. Maybe it's your family. Maybe it's maybe it's Coach Gross. Maybe it's Coach Walker, maybe it's the fans, maybe it's simply one more opportunity to play at the State Farm Center or play for your, play alongside a, a teammate who you like. Uh, and and it seemed like each guy did that and they played with a, a purpose last night. The, the crowd was 4,700 and change, which is about what you would think for a first round NIT game. Um, but that was an appreciative crowd last night. I think they, you know, anytime you go out and you play with with some kind of heart and fire and, and spirit and inspiration. I think, you know, the fans can tell, and when, just as they can tell when you don't, and they were appreciative of the effort that they saw. You know, there was a there was diving on the floor for loose balls. There was a lot of ball sharing. They were terrific on the boards, almost doubled up Valpo last night. Malcolm Hill had a 25-point game, played well. Tracy Abrams had a really great line. A uh, stat line, you know, with points, rebounds, assists, steals, zero turnovers in the time he was in there. A double double for Leron Black, who was really good on the boards and shot with a high efficiency. And and Mav made some plays, and and a lot of people made plays. They got people, they got everybody on the on the bench in the game because of the lopsided score. Although Jamal was able to clear out his bench, but um, you know somebody like Mike Thorne, and Mike Thorne could be kind of important to. Him. Um, he got to play last night for the first time since February the 4th. Slow start, you know, a lot of cringing as he was kind of throwing up that from the hip, whatever that shot is called that he does. But he did get going a little bit. Um, and the reason I say it could be important because if Finky's out and they need a little more size, which um, and they might uh, along the way here, um, that could be a, a possibility that, that, um, that Mike Thorne gets some more minutes. Uh, not a lot, I don't think, but um, if they want to stay big and spell um, Mav Morgan, now this is where I get to this intersection, and I always have to turn and look so I don't get T-boned because I think that'd be bad visuals on this, on this video block. But uh, anyhow, um, you know, we might see a little more of Mike Thorne. We saw... A little bit of uh, DJ Williams uh, last night. As, as I said, everybody ended up getting in, but a good first step. Now they're going to play Boise State. You know, by the time I got home last night from the game, <clears throat> there was about six minutes to go in the Boise um, Utah game, 
and Utah was up, and it looked to me, I think Utah was certainly favored to win the game, and and uh, was up at the time by five or whatever, and uh, and then Boise made all the plays down the stretch, and uh, their six seven kid uh, scored thirty two. Um, you know they looked plenty inspired down the stretch, maybe to steal one from Utah. Um, it'll, that'll be an interesting matchup. As we talk right now, I don't know the game time for that second round game. It could be Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or Monday, which is a big window. But um, obviously, if it's going to be Thursday, which is tomorrow, you know the Illinois people need to know that. They need to know that their that, that they that their scout needs to kick in and that their prep needs to kick in immediately. And fans need to know it as well. So, uh, you know, maybe by the time I get to the office, we'll know that. But um, at any rate, really liked the way Jamal ran the team last night. Uh, I, I admit that a lot of some of it was on the players. A lot of it was on the players. But I like the fact that Jamal didn't try to force a, a motivational uh, message to them. He's, you know, he. I think his approach, which was find it within yourself was the right way to go and he, he looked like Jamal was having fun on the sideline I'm sure he was nervous he said it had been 2003 since he was on the sideline as the head coach and we asked him what the main difference was and he said well I stood up a lot more well <laughs> that's that's probably true but um, he did a good job his staff looked like they were certainly into it and it was fun to see him play that way I you know I, I get it it's the NIT it's not where you want to be but why not my thinking has always been, why not get the most out of this thing? Um, if you can play five games with people you enjoy, and that's what we've always been told and what I've always seen with my own eyes is that these guys like each other. Um, why wouldn't you try hard to do that? It's, it doesn't take that much more effort to try hard than to try a little bit. Also yesterday, Josh Whitman fired Matt Ballant, the women's basketball coach. Uh, not a big surprise. You know, I just wondered whether he would have time to do it, actually. But he's going to conduct two searches at the same time for a women's coach, for a men's coach. Uh, Matt Ballant, a little bit like John Gross, a really likable guy. Um, and I just I thought that would be a home run of a hire when it was made, given the success he'd had at Wisconsin Green Bay. And, you know, his biggest mistake was he let, a, let an assistant coach hijack his program for a period of time and didn't reel it in until the damage had been done. And it was almost impossible to get past that as a result. Even when he got good recruits, we didn't see them generally past their sophomore year. They were transferring and moving on. So he always had a young team, always seemed to be in rebuild mode. Um, too bad. I think he's, I still think he's a good coach. We'll see what happens with him. But anyhow, uh, a lot going on in basketball, certainly, as Josh Whitman sets the bar higher. And good for him. I think that's what people want. I think people want it, it, you're not going to win more or demand more unless the guy in charge stands up and stands for it and that's what josh whitman has done hey thanks for being with us um you know like i said i don't know when this next game is but after they play the second nit game or if we have a coach i would hope we'd have a men's coach by the end of next week um maybe the middle of next week that would be great I think people don't want it to drag out and drag out and yet josh is handcuffed by the fact that some of his candidates may be in the postseason play right now. So uh, we'll, we'll check in with you again as soon as we get some more news to report. Thanks, everybody.